Can you debunk any myths about becoming a homeowner? Because I hear a lot of people on other podcasts and stuff and they're like, oh, don't buy property. It's better to rent. I've seen blogs and all this other thing. So can you just debunk some of those myths for me? I can. Um, let me address the rent real quick um, yeah. because that one just, um, I, if you're paying attention what's going on in the news and the media and with the government and the politics, like right now, renting has become um, a crisis for a lot of um, residents because the rent the rent rate is exceeding mortgage rates and they are trying to you know do something about it because a lot of people right now that are not in a position to purchase a home are also in a position to not be able to afford the rental rate so if they can't afford rent, how are you going to be able to afford a home? So it's it's a it's a disservice to a lot of communities right now with renting. Now, with some of the myth, a lot of people are being told or they've heard or seen it or, or was taught that, you know, um, you don't have to worry about all the maintenance of owning a home. You don't have to worry about the property taxes. Well, when you're paying rent, you're not just paying a set amount uh, because the, the owner is renting you that property and they think that's that's just what they want. They're being kind and generous to you. They're making sure their taxes and anything extra, any overhead that they were they would incur is included in your rent. So technically you are still paying those things. You are just paying it blindly and you don't know. Um one of the other myths I like to address, and when I think I've been addressing this all um, all of last year and coming into this year, um, we've, we've been having a lot of fluctuation with the interest rates. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are thinking, I'm going to wait till interest rates go down. Um, interest rates, they fluctuate all the time. And that's something where um, you're not going to be able to decide, hey, you know, this is the best time to buy a mortgage. Right now, interest rates are somewhere in the sixes. We've seen them get as high as the seven uh, as seven this year. Uh, with during the time of COVID, maybe twenty one or something, we saw them get as low as two. Well, in the seventies and the eighties, they've gotten as high as um, I believe eighteen percent. Right. So if you think about people buying homes in the seventies and eighties, they're paying eighteen percent on a mortgage. So that's going to fluctuate all the time, but it did not stop people from purchasing and it shouldn't stop you from purchasing now. Lenders are becoming very creative as they have always been, but a lot of other lenders that haven't, um, they are able to push out all these lender credits. Um, they're jumping in and they're saying builders as well. They're giving all these builders credits and um, you know they are helping the buyers out and they don't know that they are getting all these clothes or co clothing costs and the builders credits on the back end to help offset or buy down that that interest rate that you know we're just not used to having uh, within these last couple of years with that fluctuation. So I would say um, interest rates, you know, is not something that should deter anyone from purchasing a home because there are, you know, programs and great lenders out there that are assisting with the, that, in, that interest rate fluctuation. That's some great information. Thank you for addressing that because somebody's probably on the edge right now of should I rent or should I buy it, that whole thing. So yeah. I'm glad that you addressed that. I wanted to ask you about the benefits of good credit. And how does that play into becoming a homeowner? Because a lot of times, like, what kind of credit score do you need to uh, to purchase a home? Like, what is that number? What is that? Or is there a magic number? Well, the benefits of good credit um, mm -hmm. is more favorable to a mortgage uh, lender, right? Mm -hmm. When they look at good credit, this allows them to see how you handle debt, how responsible you are, right? You, you're trustworthy with what you're asking them to do far as lending that loan, you know, not just in home ownership, but any anyone that is going to want, you know, to look at your credit, whether it's a loan or credit card, or even with auto insurance, sometimes auto insurance, they run your credit. So it's very good to have good credit, um, you know, if you're looking to get anything and it's, and it's, far as mortgages, 
it's favorable because you will get a better interest rate. So the stronger the credit, the lower the interest rate um, that you can get. So your interest rate will be more attractive as your credit is more attractive to the lender. Mm -hmm. With credit score, typically around the board, lenders like to see a 620 minimum. Mm -hmm. There are programs um, and exceptions that you can get a, a, a loan in the 500s. Um, it just depends on case by case, right, with the lenders and what they're looking for. Sometimes you may be required to have a higher um, down payment. Um, if you come in with a 580 credit score, um, some lenders have structured particular down payment programs or particular loan, loan types where they are taking a 580. So you can definitely get a mortgage um, in the 500s. Mm, interesting. But like you said, it, it'll be more likely a higher interest rate because yeah absolutely yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah now let me ask you this just from a relational standpoint like when do you have the the credit score talk or or the money talk do you talk about these things before you get in a relationship or after like what are your thoughts on that okay so my thoughts on that is uh, this i don't think that there's a time frame that you do it i think once two people become comfortable talking about their finances and they decide that they want to be exclusive with each other and they start to become comfortable with the finances or even planning finances together then let's talk about it um it is like it, it it is sometimes a deal breaker. I've, I've heard in relationships, which I, I totally disagree that it should be. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, sometimes you hear someone say, oh, if they don't have good credit, then, you know, I, I can't date that person. I can't, <laughs> I can't be with that person. But that's re it, to me, it's ridiculous. Right. Mm -hmm. what, because let's say I let's say I, for example, I'm, I'm going to say I'm an amazing person. Right. I'm not going to say anything less about me. I know I'm an amazing, great woman. <laughs> yes. And so let's let's just say hypothetically, I came out of COVID um, and from a layoff. I lost my job or something. When when you when you when we went through what we went through with COVID, a lot of people suffer financially and. When a household suffers financially or, or whatever it is, it may not even have been a COVID. Maybe somebody lost the breadwinner in their home, you know, to death or illnesses or something. When a financial loss takes place, you have to determine where you're going to make a sacrifice at. And the first thing we we often start with is the credit cards, right? We, we decided we're not going to make a credit card payment because, Either it's our mortgage or our rent or our car note, the groceries, the children's school, education, things like that. We start prioritizing what's going to be first. So I can't, I, I just really disagree with like saying, oh, well, her credit or his credit is a little bit jacked up. Let's find out, you know, what's going on behind the scenes, what caused that. Some people just have lack of credit education and don't understand it. Right. And, you know, or you've had some hiccups along the road, something happened. We just don't know. If you look at power couples, every power couple wasn't built because they had great credit when they came together. One probably built the other's credit up. They both probably had bad credit, but it started with a mindset to say, hey, I want more. I want better. Let's get you where you need to be. So it's really it's really your mindset and where you look at people and how you decide what, you're going to treat somebody how you want to be treated if you are in that situation. I agree. Well, there's a little pushback. Okay. Okay. So let's talk let's about push. it. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's talk about it. <laughs> now, there are some things you said that I do agree with because I, I don't think you should totally discard a person based on their credit. Cause I've heard people say like, nah, I can't rock mm -hmm. her because her credit score is, is 550, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's kind of understandable. I, I heard a quote that, that said the way our relationship with money is our relationship 
like the way we treat people. Mm-hmm. I, I think money is a relationship too. It is. You know, your your personal relationship. So I'm saying all that to say this person, you decide to marry them and they might not be the best with finances, but having financial differences causes a lot of uh, marriages, a lot of people to divorce because somebody might be a, a bad steward over the money. So, and, and granted, sometimes you do have relationships. Well, shoot, most of the times you you have a somebody who who's the spender and who's the saver. Mm-hmm. But I think it's important to have a, a shared vision and where you're trying to go. So if you want to buy a pro- if you want to buy property, I think it's important that we eliminate debt, that whole kind of thing. But I would personally prefer somebody who is decent with finances as opposed to somebody who maybe just see finances as just like disposable, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And of course, I would I would prefer somebody that has, you know, <laughs> their finances together too. Yeah. But hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.